All right, I guess it's on. We're live. Uh, welcome back to the Buzz Pod. I'm your host, Nico Blatchman. And uh, joining me today is uh, number 55 for the New York Rangers in the National Hockey League, Ryan Lindgren. Welcome to the Buzz Pod. Thanks a lot, Nico, for having me. Oh, man, thanks for coming on. You're looking better than ever, Chavs. You're looking nice and thin, You're looking in shape. You're looking uh, nice and relaxed due to quarantine. You know, I, I try to, uh, you know, keep my body in the best shape as possible, just like you. <laughs> Absolutely. I love to hear that. Speaking of keeping your body in good shape and the quarantine, I was watching this Zoom call that I got to bring up. Uh, I'm sure you saw it. Um, Adam Fox was in it where he, uh, he quoted that uh, your face probably needed this quarantine to take a little break from, uh, from all those bad bounces that you were getting to the face uh, lately. Yeah, there was a, a bit of a tough stretch for me uh, kind of towards the end of the year where I um, took a, a puck to the face against the Blue Jackets, cut my lip pretty good. And then uh, I think it was the next game we played the Bruins. I took a, a high stick and got a pretty bad black eye and was uh, bleeding pretty good. And my nose was cut up. So, yeah, definitely needed a little uh, time to heal up. I like that. But now your face is looking even better than before. Did you do yeah. something? Yeah, no, I, you know, I just think it's rest and, um, you know, just trying to keep, uh, you know, sharp objects or, or whatever away from the face, I think is definitely, uh, you know, puck, whatever it is, punches, just, you know, try to keep the face uh, healthy and clean. Yeah, definitely. A lot of moisturizer, a lot less fists and sticks. No doubt, no doubt. Love to hear that. Um, what else have you been up to during the quarantine? You got a, you got a Netflix show, maybe a book you're reading if you're into that? I don't know. No, no, not a huge book guy. Uh, Netflix show. Um, you know, I haven't actually been watching Netflix. I watch a different show that my mom and brother kind of got me into. Uh, kind of a drama. I don't know if you heard of it. It's called This Is Us. Oh, of uh, course. I watched it. It was incredible. Yeah, yeah. I like it a lot so far. Uh, big fan of Jack Pearson and, and the whole gang. So, <laughs> Dude, I missed that show. Yeah, I love it. I loved it, man. I loved it. Um, <laughs> Anyway, you uh, so that's it. But you, have you been working out? Obviously. Yeah, I mean, you try to do your best. Obviously, gyms and and stuff aren't open here, but uh, you know, I'll play tennis a lot, and um, you know, got got kind of a workout area downstairs. So try to just keep keep uh, in shape as best as possible for sure. The tennis is definitely uh, the reason for the nice tan you got going, and the oh, yeah. compliments the face. Yeah, tennis. I've uh, been playing a lot of golf lately, too. Just joined a uh, country club here in Minnesota. So, been golfing uh, damn near every day. Wow. Love to hear that. Love yeah. to. Is your golf game good, or would you say, would you consider yourself a, like a solid golfer? You know, I'd like to say I would consider myself a solid golfer, but I'm just very inconsistent. And, you know, my emotions definitely get the best of me. And um, <laughs> I, I play a lot, so you'd think I'd be pretty good. But, boy, I, I still hack it around pretty good out there. <laughs> wow, that's unreal. Um, you uh, so you grew up in uh, Minneapolis, Minnesota, uh, hockey hotbed. Obviously, uh, can you talk a bit about like getting into hockey in your younger days? Uh, I assume you got into hockey when you were super young. Yeah, yeah. So we, uh, my family, grew up in Lakeville, which is about twenty minutes away from Minneapolis, and uh, two older brothers that that played hockey, both goalies, and my dad uh, played hockey. Uh, growing up and, and played college hockey so I uh, got into it at an early early age and you know growing up in Minnesota it seemed like all my buddies and everything played uh, played hockey and um, you know a lot of outdoor rinks and, and things like that so um, yeah just grew up around the game you know mini sticks all that stuff and just fell in love with it from an early age and just kept it on going. Yeah you mentioned uh, being like uh, living in Lakeville or very close to Lakeville um, they got a good uh high school hockey team there but you decided to uh opt out of high school hockey in minnesota which is a bit rare but uh you chose to go to shattuck st mary's uh you actually went there as an underager and then uh stayed uh not a big deal by the way and then uh stayed and played uh your year with uh with me obviously where uh you racked up a couple assists because of me obviously so can you uh, can you talk a bit about the decision of uh, opting out of high school hockey and going to Shattuck? Obviously, like Shattuck is a big deal over there, um, but but high school hockey seems to be the more popular route for Minnesota guys. 
Yeah, I mean, it was definitely a tough choice. Um, both my brothers played high school hockey, got the whole high school tournament experience, which is, you know, such a big deal in Minnesota. Um, everybody, everybody loves going to that and, um, you know, the XL Energy Center is packed. So, um, you know, definitely a tough decision, but I thought, you know, Shattuck was the best uh, situation for me and, um, you know, went there my uh, eighth grade year of uh, school and, and stayed there uh, till my sophomore year. So, um, absolutely love Shattuck, loved, uh, loved the guys I went there with, great hockey, great coaches, uh, great schooling as well. And, um, you know, that year we played together, you know, it was pretty easy easy for me to get points. And I had number 14, uh, Beaver tailing it on the back door. And uh, you knew if you got it to him, it was going to be right underneath the bar. <laughs> I was number 14, for those who don't know. I thought you were going to throw, throw someone like Keller out there, some <laughs> name drop someone like that. But I love that. I absolutely love that. That's true, actually. I was the backbone of that team. Uh, yeah. Nobody really knows it. Nobody gives me credit for it. Have you been watching uh, the – the documentary on Michael Jordan. Yeah, yeah, I've been watching. Uh, I was pretty much the Scotty Pippen, wouldn't you say? Yeah, no doubt. Uh, it's very comparable for you, but uh, <laughs> yeah, I definitely see the resemblance there. Oh my gosh! So, uh, so talk. Let's talk a bit about Shattuck. Um, your your underage year, you uh, actually had just under a point per game by two points, fifty-seven points in fifty-nine games. Not a big deal as an underager, and then our year. Um, your Bantam year, your true Bantam year, uh, 88 points in 55 games. Now, you're supposed to be a stay-at-home defenseman, 88 points in 55 games. Um, I was more of like a stay-at-home forward. I had 24 points that year. But talk about uh, – talk a bit about like just exploding that year, um, being more comfortable maybe than the year before, and also like the, the team that we had must have helped as well. Yeah, no doubt. Um, you know, my first year uh, going to Shattuck, I was originally a forward going there. And uh, that first year was my, my first year switching back to, to defense. So, um, you know, I was a guy that, you know, still still have a little forward in me and like to join the rush and, and be as offensive as I can. And, um, you know, in that second year, too, like you said, we had such an incredible team with, uh, you know, Keller, Blatchman, uh, McPhee, and, and Lowen. And, um, you know, even you can't even forget about Nico Karamanis. He was uh he was a heck of a player and um so yeah, we had a great team and uh you know it seemed like we, we did pretty well, we dominated pretty good. So um yeah, it was definitely a great year for all of us. Yeah, and from there you were actually the first commit on the team. I remember when you committed, um I called I think you were at home. I remember like when we all found out in the dorm. Um I was probably one of the first guys to call you, not a big deal, but a great friend. But um but yeah, you committed to University of Minnesota at, at a young age. Being a guy from Minnesota, you pretty much grew up right there, right next to University of Minnesota. Um, and then you ended up going, you played prep your sophomore year. And then, oh, okay, whatever, let's just get into committing to University of Minnesota. Can you talk a bit about that, like how that came about uh, at such a young age? Yeah, I mean, growing up in Minnesota, I was always a big golfer fan, went to a lot of games uh, growing up. Um, so I knew that, you know, if they ever offered me to, to play for them, it, it was going to be a no-brainer for me. And, um, yeah, it, it was uh, – they had a great coaching staff with Lucia and, and Mike Gensel and Grandpa Tony. So got very comfortable with them. And, uh, yeah, I just knew that, uh, that if I got the opportunity to, to play at University of Minnesota, it was going to be an easy choice for me. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, that's like – when you think of University of Minnesota, that's, that's some top dog stuff right there. Uh, the, the following season, after getting 88 points in 55 games, you played for the prep team uh, your sophomore year. Was that a, like a huge step up for you? Like to play from uh, – to go from Bantam to, to prep? Because your points, like you went from 88 points in 55 games to 15 points in 51 games. So talk about like how different – and also, you were a sophomore on the prep team, which, for those who don't know, is a big deal to be a sophomore on the prep team at Shattuck. Only few guys have done it. Um, guys like, I don't know, off the dome. Uh, ever heard of Sidney Crosby, uh, Clayton Keller, uh, Ryan Lindgren, stuff like that. So, Yeah. Um, yeah, it was definitely a big jump going from Bantam to, to prep. And, you know, like you said, my uh, my point total definitely dwindled a little bit. But, uh 
we definitely learned a lot that year. Got to play for for Coach Ward and and learn a lot from him. And you know, he was definitely a guy that helped a lot with uh, you know helping me learn more of the defensive part of the game. And um, you know, I think that that year kind of transitioned my role into being more of an offensive guy into more of a defensive, you know, stay at home type of guy. And, you know, I think that kind of ran right into my time at NTDP and, you know, I just went on from there. So, you know, I owe a lot to coach Ward. He taught me a lot about, you know, my, my own zone and, and how to be a successful player there. Yeah. You're uh, you're, you were, you were always a leader. I remember being at Shattuck, especially because you had been there um, the year before as an underager, I remember you being definitely like the captain of the team, the leader on our team. We didn't have letters, obviously, but um, it was obvious who was. And uh, I find like for such a young guy, you were always super mature. You knew when was the right time to joke around, when was the right time to be serious. You, you put guys, even like me, I'm the sheriff, and you were putting me in line here and there, you know, who would have known? So uh, can you talk a bit about like that aspect of your game, just like, I feel like you're a leader, but more than anything, you lead by example, kind of like by what you do, but you make sure everyone on the team is is in line. I remember you calling out guys, you know, but in the best way. And uh, can you talk about that? Because at NTDP, you wore the, you wore the C for most of your time there. Uh, you ended up wearing the C for World Jays. Uh, I mean, you got letters everywhere you went, you know, so far, except for the New York Rangers so far. Yeah. Um, yeah, I guess it was just something that just kind of came to me, I guess. Like you said, I mean, it was my second year being there on that Bantam team. So, um, you know, I kind of knew, you know, what Shattuck was all about and just try to help, you know, the guys that were just coming in. But, uh, but yeah, I guess that just kind of transitioned, you know, as I went on in hockey. And, um, you know, it's something that I like to take a lot of pride in. And like you said, try to be more of a leader by example and, you know, speak up when I need to. Um, but yeah, I think that's something that, uh, that I like doing. I, I like being looked at as a leader and, um, you know, hopefully not too hard on guys, but, uh, you know, try to get the best out of them. Talk, yeah. Talk a bit about your, uh, your time with NTDP, uh, your first year you played like over 90 games. You had 32 points. I mentioned you wore the C, uh, your second year you played around the same amount of games, almost not over 90 games. Um, 37 points for the C as well um, with some world juniors in there, captain, um, pretty sure. Okay, yeah, we'll, we'll stop at that. So um, can you talk a bit about your time at NTDP? Like, obviously, a couple guys went with you from Shattuck, so you knew a couple guys there, and then you obviously met some of your best friends there. Yeah, uh, time there at NTDP was awesome. Uh, like you said, having guys from Shattuck, like Kells and and Graham and, and JD, uh, you know, definitely helped the transition because, you, you know, people go in there. But, yeah, I absolutely loved it there. It was great hockey. Uh, you know, the practices, um, you know, helped out a lot, you know, playing against, you know, all the best players in the country and, um, you know, in the games too, getting the international experience and playing against all the best players from around the world uh, was definitely huge. And, um, you know, definitely a, a, a great time to be there. And, you know, we had, we had a good team with a lot of great guys. And, um, you know, that's where I first met Foxy and, and got to play with him and, um, you know, played World Juniors with him and, and now we're together uh, as D partners uh, for the Rangers. So it's pretty cool how that worked out. Yeah, that's unreal. I actually read a little bit about how you guys were D partners together a bit on like the third pairing. Um, I don't know if it was last year or, or in the beginning of this year. And then you guys worked your way up to be uh, the top D pairing uh, on the Rangers towards towards the end there. Um, I read that. Is that true? Uh, I mean, I, I don't know about about that. I mean, we um, seemed like we definitely got more responsibility and, and a little more ice time as the season went on. And, um, you know, a lot of credit to Foxy. I mean, he had a heck of a year and he's a really easy guy to play with. And, um, you know, he's so gifted offensively. And, um, you know, I think it's kind of understated is how good he is defensively too. And um, just a really easy guy to play with. And, yeah, it seemed like we got better and better as the year went on and just got more comfortable with each other. That's unreal. Talk about, so after your last year with NTDP, you get drafted to the National Hockey League in the second round, 49th OB by the Boston Bruins. Um, I'm assuming you went to the draft. You were ranked high. Did you go? Yeah, I went to the draft. I was in Buffalo. Oh, okay. Can you talk a bit about that whole experience? That's an experience that not many people get to get to get to have, you know, 
Um, I unfortunately slipped out of that draft. So can you talk a bit about, uh, <laughs> can you talk a bit about not getting slipped and getting picked? Uh, yeah, it was cool. Uh, my whole family was there. My billet family, uh, from, uh, Michigan out of going. So yeah, it was a lot of fun. Uh, pretty stressful, uh, being there, you know, hoping to hear your, hear your name, uh, get called that, that, uh, first night, uh, in the first round. Um, Obviously, wasn't able to and, and had to sleep on that, and wake up the next day and hope to get uh, picked as soon as possible. But, uh, you know, I was very happy to get uh, drafted by the Bruins. Um, great organization. Uh, so, yeah, it, it was great finally hearing your name get called. And, um, you know, I was with the Bruins for a couple of years and, and they traded me at the deadline to the Rangers and uh, very happy to be there. Trade, traded you for Rick Nash. I mean, there was a couple other names mixed in yeah, there, but it was pretty much you for Rick Nash. What do you think about it? I, I don't know about that. It definitely wasn't <laughs> a, a one-for-one -one swap. There was a couple guys thrown in uh, with the Bruins. So, uh, so, yeah, pretty cool to be tied up with that name. Yeah. Um, talk a bit about – let's go – Let's now, now you go into University of Minnesota. This is obviously your dream school. Um, can you talk a bit about, like, your time there, uh, going in as a freshman, uh, obviously having a ton of responsibility – um, you know, you put up seven points in 32 games. You had 65 PIMS. Uh, you made the NCAA all rookie team. Uh, not a big deal. Talk about, uh, so talk about your time there, man. Just like being at a university campus, obviously you get to have a, a bit of fun there. Uh, you're a division one athlete, especially at the university of Minnesota, you're a division one hockey player, not just a division one athlete. You know, you got that leather jacket, maybe, I don't know. Uh, yeah, it was, uh, it was cool. Uh, yeah, going in my freshman year, uh, I had to live in your dorms a freshman year. Um, and yeah, just kind of the balancing act of learning, uh, you know, you got to handle school and hockey at the same time. And, um, you know, we had a, we had a great team my freshman year. We were, I think, ranked, uh, fourth going into the, um, NCAA tournament. And, um, you know, just talking about the life there. I mean, it, it was a lot of fun. You know, uh, all the older guys had a, had like a hockey house that we uh, would call the swamp. And, you know, uh, that was our place that we'd uh, do. Uh, Saturday night. Games and, you know, have some. My, my no way that just happened dude what just happened there i don't know i think it's still recording though so just so just keep it going so <laughs> all right so so you guys had a nice <laughs> hockey house there i mean dude i think it's a, still the same recording but for those who don't know it just cut out a bit for us so all right. So uh, anyway, so going going on from Minnesota, tough bounce, guys. Like we're on Zoom right now for the first time. We tried Skype. We've tried it all. So we're just we're just buzzing right now. Um, but anyway, so talk a bit about like uh, your World Junior experience that year, U twenty. Um, you you uh, won the gold medal. Can you hear me right now? Holy smokes! This is so tough, man. Why is this happening? Can you hear me now? Holy I can hear you a little bit, yeah. Holy smokes. All right, so. <laughs> this was working good for a while. I know, I know. And I think it's still the same recording, though. So if it could just go back, please, to normal. Um, <laughs> you go world juniors, um, you 20, you win the gold medal. Can you talk a bit about that experience? Yeah, that was awesome. Uh, I was in, uh, Toronto and Montreal and, uh, yeah, we had a great team and, uh, was able to kind of, I think we went four and all in, in the round robin in Toronto and then, uh, moved over to, uh, Montreal where they had the semis and in, in the finals and, um, that semis was the, was the, uh, game against Russia where Troy Terry scored those three uh, shootout moves where he went five hole every time and um, 
you know, that was incredible. And then, you know, played Canada in the finals where I did not participate. I was uh, in my hotel room uh, throwing up. I got caught like some sort of virus or something like that and had to miss that uh, final game against Canada and ended up having to spend a couple of days in the hospital when I got back into Minnesota. But uh, yeah, it was still an unbelievable experience and uh, really cool to capture gold there. Dude, you might have caught an early corona. That's what I'm saying. I mean, it, it sounds similar to what people explain uh, what Corona is like right now. But uh, yeah, it, it was a it was a nasty virus. At one point, they thought I was having a heart attack. So um, I lost like 25 pounds, and it was uh, it was bad news. Holy smokes, man! That's a tough bounce. Uh, you've obviously gained those pounds back. I'd say you're a heavy you're a heavyweight in the National Hockey League fighting guys like Wayne Simmons. Can you talk a bit about your game? Because uh, you are a tough-as-nails guy. I've seen, I've seen a couple. Uh, I've read up on you, obviously, today because, uh, you know, I'm a podcast host. I do my research on the guys. But uh, yeah. I heard, I've seen that, uh, you know, your teammates refer to you as a tough guy. Like, uh, I read one thing. Someone says tough as nails. I don't know about that. But um, you fought uh, Wayne Simmons. You fought a couple guys. You lay some huge hits. I mean, you used to play like that um, back in the day at Shattuck, like always a physical guy. Even in practice, I remember going one-on-one -on -one with you was like, fuck. But um, can you talk a bit about, like, your game, just like your grit? Like, uh, no matter who it is, you're not, uh, you're not backing down. Yeah, I mean, I, I try to do that as, uh, as much as possible. You know, I like to be physical. I like to, to chirp a little bit and, um, you know, just try to, you know, Hit, hit as much as I can and, um, you know, not back down to anyone. But, uh, well, yeah, the whole thing with Simmons, I mean, that was during training camp and, you know, I was fighting as hard as I can to, to stay with the Rangers and make a good impression. And uh, um, no better way to do that than with one of the toughest guys in the league. And, you know, it wasn't a, a big fight or anything, but we got into it a little bit. And, um, you know, if you watch the one with Kadri, too, I had uh, later in the year, I mean, that guy absolutely pumped me um yeah I saw that good good little black eye there yeah I mean he just kept feeding me right after right and you know I didn't have too much uh defense for it he kind of got on me early and just just kept him going but uh, I do give myself a little credit for for not going down and you know I hung in there and, and ate some good right ones yeah I love that I mean you've always been a meter you know whether it be cookies and milk or uh fist to the face so you know you know how to take those and I love to see it I was actually going to tell you um, if you ever, now that you're, you know, making the big bucks in the National Hockey League, if you ever need any, uh, any tips or anything like that for fighting, you can uh, just fly me out there now that you're uh, making the big bucks and I can kind of show you the ropes. Yeah, no doubt. That's not a bad idea. I've seen some of your uh, fights uh, on YouTube or whatever, and yeah, you're, uh, you're not afraid to to uh, step in there and, and chuck them pretty good too. So yeah, I might have to get you down here in Minnesota. Well, yeah, I don't know if you remember, but we were both the guys that like to eat cookies and milk over there at Shattuck. So I think we've both kind of learned to just eat what comes our way. Yeah, no doubt. Me and you were uh, definitely not shy of the, the cafeteria back at, uh, back at Shattuck. Oh my God. Uh, before we wrap this up, I just want to get into a bit of your NHL lifestyle. You're living in New York city now. Can you talk a bit about like your living situation? Like uh, just living in a big city like that, being a, being a, an NHL player in a big city like that. I assume you don't live in a cardboard box over there in the city. So can you talk a bit about your setup and uh, you know, maybe if you got a roommate, mix them in there, give them some love. Uh, no roommate. Um, so actually, you know, I started the year in Hartford and, and got an apartment there. And then, uh, um, I think it was late October. I got called back up to the Rangers and, uh, you know, at that point, you know, everyone else has already gotten a place, but, uh, but yeah, they helped me get a place in New York and uh, I got it, uh, in Chelsea, which is about a 10 minute walk from MSG, which was, uh, was perfect for me. And, um, yeah, it was just a one bedroom apartment. It, it was a nice spot, good location. And, you know, Foxy was uh, about two blocks down the road. So we always hung out together and, um, you know, got dinner uh, whenever we wanted. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it's a great city, a lot of, a lot of things to do. Um, you know, a little overwhelmed at first. I don't really know, um, 
you know, my, my way around the city, the whole subway, um, don't really know how to, to work that out yet. So kind of a deer in the headlights, you know, coming from Minnesota to, uh, to New York city. I didn't know a whole lot about it, but, uh, I figured my way around the city, uh, All right. I don't know if you can hear me right now, but you just cut out. I assume you just, all right. All right. We're back. All right. So, uh, yeah, that's, uh, bro, that's pretty much all I got for you. This, uh, connection has been, uh, brutal for the last little bit, but, uh, hopefully if, uh, sometimes the connection is bad, but it still picks up everything that we said. And, uh, you know, I don't even know how long this thing was cause this isn't Skype, but, uh, I think it was, uh, I think it was a good one. I think we got some stuff in there. I think we mixed in a couple of words. I don't know if you're even talking right now. I can't hear you. All right, we're going to wrap this up. All right. Hey, thanks a lot, Nico. Love the buzz pod and uh, love the work you're doing. Sorry about the connection. <laughs> That's all right. It's not your fault. Jesus. Oh my God, dude.